From the Intellfluence headquarters in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, this is the Intellfluence Influencer Spotlight. In each episode, we sit down with an influencer from our network and we discuss their background as well as their unique approach to influencer marketing. Camelia Britton is a San Diego-based blogger who focuses on travel, lifestyle, and inspiration. Originally from Texas, Camelia decided to take her first big trip overseas to Europe in 2006. Shortly after, Camelia learned about travel hacking and discovered ways to travel to a new country each month for pennies on the dollar. In 2016, Camelia created her blog called Hackerette, where she shares tips that she discovered through her travels and life experiences, always presented with a healthy dose of gratitude and inspiration. As an influencer, Camelia currently enjoys an audience reach of around 250,000. You can learn more about Camelia at hackerette.com. So Camelia, can you give us a brief introduction, including how you learned about uh, error fares? which was essentially your first breakthrough when it came through, uh, when it came to hacking your travel, if I'm not mistaken. Well, not my first, but it was definitely a key pivotal point in, you know, kind of what I'm doing now, actually. So the backstory on that is, um, you know, I didn't travel as a kid. I didn't get on my first flight till I was 18 years old. So it was a little bit of a late bloomer. Didn't really leave the country till I was like, you know, it was back in like 2006. So, um, and then <clears throat> went on my first big Euro trip for like two or three weeks. And then realized I like traveling. I didn't really know because I hadn't done it before. And then realized I wanted to do more of it. And so kind of went down the rabbit hole of Google. Like I probably Googled something like, how do I travel for free or cheap or something silly like that? And of course, Google pops up with all these you know, answers. And that's when I learned about travel hacking. And so I kind of went down that rabbit hole and started learning about travel hacking, got really good at that, playing the game on credit cards and the systems like that. And during that, I discovered what is called an error fair, you know, a mistake fair and the glitches in the system, you know, where you can travel the world through a mistake and, you know, getting flights for pennies on the dollar. And so I figured out how to do those really well. <laughs> so that was like a whole nother next level of, you know, the travel hacking game. And um, that's whenever, that was before I started my blog actually. And so the reason that I kind of started my blog is because everybody was asking me, you know, how you're a nurse, like, how are you in a new country once a month, you know? And so I was like, well, and so I kind of was just tired of explaining the process over and over. So I started my blog and I built a course and, um, yeah, that was back in 2016 and lots has evolved since then. Are you, are you still in nursing or do you just do this full time now? I am definitely full time. Um, yeah, I was very cautious about leaving my nursing job, of course, um, you know, for Instagram and blogging, which is, you know, very illogical in my nursing left brain. So um, <laughs> I, um, but I did after, you know, some time I finally was just able to do it really comfortably. And so I kind of waned a bit on my nursing, you know, I kind of like just did less hours and less hours and less hours until I finally just jumped. And so now I'm able to do it full time. And I think I went full time officially probably, I think it was like August of last year or something like that. So it's been almost a year, even though I've been doing this almost three years, but yeah, I was able to kind of jump with, um, you know, with confidence knowing that I was okay. So yeah. <laughs> Very nice. And I, I love the imagery on your site and Instagram in particular, they're amazing. And so, um, traveling is just one component of your life. Um, you have all the responsibilities with summarizing your trips, providing useful advice, creating compelling content. Do you do everything yourself or do you have a team? I do a lot of things myself. I'm slowly growing kind of um, sort of a per project team, I guess. I have, I'm now in the process of redoing my website, which I'm super excited about. So that's gonna be coming as quickly as I can get it done, but probably not any, probably not before a month or so. But a lot of my, you know, blog and stuff is from so long ago, back in 2016 when I started. So I'm excited to update it with some fresh new look of what I've been kind of working on more recently. So, but yeah, I kind of have a team as in more a per project kind of a team, but I mostly do everything myself. I, um, you know, I take all my own photos. I edit all my own photos. I definitely have an aesthetic that I'm drawn to and, and I haven't been able to, that's not something I actually want to kind of, you know, uh, send out for you know for someone else to do that's actually the part that I enjoy um, but that is there is you know I do have a team but not like a full-time team of help I kind of have contractors that kind of help me with different things so yeah but a lot of it is me <laughs> very nice and do you have any um, 
particular brand partnerships that have stood out to you that have been kind of your favorites that you can just name off the top of your head? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've done so many over the years and they've all been amazing, all my partners. I think one that really stood out to me was such an interesting and cool collaboration that was really unique that I'd never done before. And that was GoDaddy actually, you know, the tech company actually reached out to me and hired me to be the host of their Icons of Our Tribe project. It was a photojournalism project where I partnered up with their on their um, their staff photographer who's been traveling around the world, going around and interviewing everyday entrepreneurs, doing really cool things, you know, cool people doing cool things, and we were capturing it through photo photojournalism project. And so I was actually the interviewer and the host and telling the stories of these entrepreneurs through my stories, through my Instagram posts. And I actually wrote five blog posts for the GoDaddy blog, which will be published later on. And but most of all, it was a great collaboration. They loved what I did. I was the project manager on that as well. So a little bit outside of the Instagram platform, but also tied into it because we were creating content for Instagram. And then they ended up loving what I did and asked, and asked me actually to come to New York um, to work with them, um, ho helping host the Create Cultivate conference and things like that. So that was a really cool opportunity and love doing that kind of thing. Love connecting with people and hosting things and getting more contact outside of the platform, which I love Instagram, it's definitely amazing, but also I love doing things outside of the platform on a more human you know, connection level and things like that. So that was really cool. And then along that lines with the influencer marketing, um, when do you feel that, that you became an influencer? In other words, when was the aha moment when you said, you know, this is a viable revenue stream and I wanna continue down this path? Oh gosh, it's such a, it's such a like progression. I mean, when I started in 2016, I didn't, influencer wasn't a thing. I mean, it was, but for Kim Kardashian, like not like everyday people. So in 2016, you know, when I started, I started out as a blog and I was going to sell my course and I did on my air affairs and things like that. And so that was really how I set out. I never set out to be an influencer. I was doing my blog and taking photos and working as a nurse and sharing tips and stuff like that. And I think, and I grew really quickly for whatever reason, I think back then it was probably a lot easier to grow as well, but um, I grew really quickly and I first had my first brand reach out to me, which was one of those food companies. It was like, I think Purple Carrot or something. And they were like, hey, we'll give you 50 bucks and a free week of food if you post this on your feed. And I was like, okay, like girls gotta eat, like why not, you know? So I was like, okay, like I'll try it. But I wasn't seeking it out, they came to me and then I, I kind of did it and staged it and did the whole thing. And I had just gotten back from Spain and I was like, oh, I did this after Spain. And I kind of like worked it into my feed and everything with travel. But I realized that content creation is an art and it was actually harder than it looks. And so at that point though, I was intrigued because I always loved the photography and things like that. And so that was my very first one. And I think I only had like 20,000 followers or something like that, right? And then. Over time, I started to get more and more of them. They were kind of coming to me. So I never really set out and kind of sought out brands. You know, in the beginning, it kind of just came to me. And then that's when I kind of realized like, oh, people are making money doing this. But it, was, it wasn't my goal in the beginning. It kind of just came. And then, you know, and then I started getting invited on press trips and things like that. And I think my really aha moment to answer your question would be, when I got invited on my first ever press trip to the Maldives, so in Maldives, Maldives. <laughs> and so I was blown away, super excited. That was such a bucket list, you know, thing to be invited to. And so I thought, wow, I'm getting invited to go on a press trip in the Maldives. So yeah, I feel like at that point I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in this. I'm in. <laughs> That's awesome. And you talk about beauty in content creation. So where do you look to for inspiration? Are there other influencers, travel blogs, or even books or other resources that come to mind? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I obviously look around, but I definitely, I really just kind of go and see what I see first, to be honest. I mean, everyone goes to the touristy places, but like, I think, that is something you have or you don't. You have the eye or you don't, and and maybe you don't. And a lot of people copy and whatever. And there's there's always a shot to be copied because it's like the Taj Mahal is the Taj Mahal. You can only do so many angles of that or whatever. But when you kind of go to a place and you see that beauty in your own through your eyes and through your that's like a talent you have or you don't. And so I think that way before I ever way before there was ever Instagram, like I was the girl traveling the world and posting. 150 photos on Facebook albums, right, for free before it was my job. And so 
and people, and I loved editing them and just telling that story. And people were always like, I felt like I went to Paris because I saw your story or I saw, not sorry, your, your photos and things like that. And so this was something I was doing back in the like MySpace days and you know, before there was ever Instagram. And so I think that that was just part of a natural thing that I'm like, oh, I see it and I have a frame in my mind's eye. And that's also like a muscle. It's like, it's like a muscle that works as you grow it, you know, as you work on it, you kind of always are continuing to, do, to produce content and perfect your craft. And so, um, so I don't know, my inspiration is usually me going there and seeing what I see for me, but everyone has a different process. Very nice. And then last question today. So what are a few of your goals moving forward? I know you have the Instagram course. Do you have anything else in the pipeline that's coming up? Um, I actually, yeah, I have, I'm launching my presets really soon. A lot of people have asked for that and um, it's taken a while because I want to do it right. And so I'm launching those soon. I'm redoing my website and I'm doing more, you know, speaking and things like that. And um, I'm potentially going to maybe be doing like a group coaching kind of thing on my website once my website gets redone. So that's kind of farther down the line. But loving been you know getting more into hosting and speaking and doing things more connecting really outside of the platform and having that human element and so i'm excited to see where that goes want to join intellifluence as an influencer for free it's easy visit intellifluence.com click on the influencers link and then click on the join for free button to sign up once you have registered you will get immediate access to our influencer marketplace where you can browse relevant offers from brands and apply on the spot You'll also be eligible to receive attractive product and service pitches from brands. There's absolutely no cost to join as an influencer, so we hope you take advantage of our service. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and well, you know the drill. Until our next episode, keep being awesome.